Hi everyone, my name is Brittany. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'll be reading some Beverly Jenkins. It's Brittany, bitch. Now, she's a very famous historical romance author, and I really loved her book I read, Forbidden. I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed this. This is the first book in her Old West series. And I was just sitting at my desk the other day, and I was like, you know what? I could really go for Beverly Jenkins. So I decided to make a fun reading vlog out of this because I wanted to reattempt her again. And I was like, let's just do a whole bunch of books right now because I'm really feeling historical romance at the moment. I think it's probably because we're deciding to rewatch Outlander. And some shows I feel like do impact your life more than others, and you just kind of get a hankering for whatever it is so if you're watching a good sci-fi show like I will definitely be more interested in sci-fi at the moment and I just I'm seeing more of the connections as I get older like certain things sound good at certain times and I think a big part of that also is like I'm just craving historical romances coziness and I like the history aspect of it but I also like the romance because it's just kind of fun so I decided to do three of her books um one of them is a standalone the other two are in series so one of the books I'll be reading is Rebel and this is the first in the Women Who Dare series the Civil War has ended and Valinda is down in New Orleans trying to help the newly emancipated community thrive. However, she runs into some trouble and runs straight into our main character, Captain Drake. Now, Drake comes from a well-known and well-established New Orleans architect family and their romance ensues. This one is sound really interesting. I like how New Orleans was chosen here as the location. I'm really into how she chooses different locations for her books because each one of these in this reading vlog is a completely different location and also different time periods and I really love that. We love a queen who can write all different time periods. I'll also be reading Destiny's Embrace, which is the first in the Destiny series. And this one takes place in the 19th century American West. And basically our main characters fall in love because she is his housekeeper to my understanding. And they just have a thing. Our main characters are Destiny and Logan. And as far as I know, that's that's pretty much the main conflict is just American West and, and that. But of course, you know, historical romances aren't always good on the descriptions. So I'm sure I'll have more to say about this as I get into it. And the first one I'll be attempting is Midnight. And this is the standalone novel and this one takes place in 18th century Boston so it's like 1775 and we have our main character Faith and she is Lady Midnight so she's a spy working on behalf of the rebels and it's really interesting because her father is like a red coat supporter and like so is she like on paper I would say and she's actually Lady Midnight and she's passing information to the rebels and what happens is our other main character his father is basically taken captive and dies and he wants to know who turned him in and he's wondering if it was Lady Midnight he doesn't know who it was and so I think a big point of this story is trying to find out obviously who turned in his father and what Lady Midnight maybe had to do with it so obviously we know it's our main character Faith and she's working on behalf of the rebels but you know she doesn't look that way and then they're also kind of trying to deal with their own romances because she's kind of being thwarted by suitors and he's also being like thrown women to get married to and I'm only 30% of the way into this but that's just what I've gotten so far I'm really loving like the historical vibes of this I just kind of like this time period I think all of us have different time periods we find interesting and this is one of those ones I really enjoy and I just love the whole like aspect of the revolutionary war you know what I mean like fuck Britain like happy treason day you guys like just do it I'm really curious how Faith and Nicholas are actually gonna get together because with her as a spy I just wonder if he's ever gonna trust her I don't know if that's gonna happen but I'm very excited to figure it out so when I do finish this book which will hopefully be sometime early next week I'll fill you guys in on how it goes but so far so good I really love the idea of this I'm just kind of obsessed with this time period at the moment if you couldn't tell so that's why I started with this one first. So I'll let you guys know how it goes. Bye. Can we dance in the moonlight? Hold hands if the mood's right. Make plans to the sunrise and sleep till noon. I'll take you to the beach. Get our toes wet and leave after sunset. And I would do it all again Cause I don't want my day to end So I finally finished Midnight and scratched my Revolutionary War itch and I'm gonna give this four stars. This is set in Boston in 1775, you know, during the whole Revolutionary War and we're following our main character, Faith, who is Lady Midnight. She is a spy for the rebels and she has a loyalist father that she doesn't really get along with, it seems like, because at some point in the story, he basically throws her out over a disagreement and she goes to live with our hero of the story, Nicholas. And Nicholas is back in town because his father was wrongfully imprisoned and then passed away. So now he thinks that Faith's father is behind it and turned him in. And when Faith's father throws her out, Nicholas literally rescues her off the street and first offers her to live with him as like his like live-in housekeeper and then eventually proposes they get married. Again, I just really love Beverly Jenkins and her writing. She is just so good at we 
weaving historical romances together because you really get the history aspect of it. You really feel like you're in the time and then you also really feel the romance and how it's like blooming over time. I did wish that we got more of a spy aspect with her though. I feel like we didn't really have that many good like spy scenes. I really wanted to see her do more of like spy missions. I just feel like we really didn't get enough of that in my personal opinion. I wanted a lot more from that because that was one of my favorite parts of this is I love a good spy I realize especially in historical romance like I really like that. I've read a couple of other books now that do have spies along with historical romance and they just work for me different than like contemporary like spy novels or something like that like those don't really interest me but for some reason you bring in a historical romance and you have a slight spy aspect or like subplot cherry on top of my day. I love how this is written so well, but it doesn't feel like a textbook. It actually feels like you're learning about the historical event and it's interesting. Honestly, her book should be taught in like history class because it actually makes whatever is going on interesting. I mean, certain wars and stuff I feel like are very interesting to certain people. Like I'm a slut for the Revolutionary War. I don't know why, I don't know what it is about it. Something about it just is so intriguing to me. But I think one of her things that she's so good at is just making you interested in the history, even if you don't particularly care about that time period. She just works in in a way that you learn but you're not feeling preached to and you are really swooning over these characters. My biggest gripe with this honestly was the fact that she uses the word damp a lot to describe a lot of things during sexual intercourse and I thought that was really weird. <laughs> I was like not everything has to be damp. I would take moist over damp more often than not. I just feel like damp was a little weird. It was overly used. It was a little bit too repetitive. I think there's some other words you could have used instead of damp. Um, it just kind of makes Faith seem like a damp dark cellar instead of a beautiful, gorgeous, sexual woman, uh, just did not work for me. But that's okay. I mean, otherwise the sexual stuff was delightful as usual, but that word was just overly used. I think she uses that word a lot anyway. It's just something about her writing I'm not like totally in love with, but I mean, it's fine. There are worse literary crimes to commit. And also the ending was a little bit lackluster for me. I'm not really sure how to describe that, but like, I just kind of wanted more out of like a difficult plot at the end. Like I wanted more of like, again, the spy aspect or like the war aspect at the end. And it was, just, I don't know, I guess it's like a romance it's gonna end like on a happier note, but I want it to be like deeper and darker, especially because it's a standalone. I was hoping for some more deaths or something like that that would have made other things more interesting. I don't know. I really liked it, but just kind of like used more for the ending. I don't really know what it is I was looking for, but like I just wanted more. So anyways, now I am on to Rebel and I am very excited for this. This this takes place in the 1860s uh, during Reconstruction in Louisiana. So basically all the slaves were free with the Emancipation Proclamation. Now they're trying to rebuild their lives. So our main character goes down to Louisiana and like starts up a school and decides to like teach people how to read and write and um, you know, make skills that are useful for them now that they are free. I think it's a really beautiful concept and it's not really a period of time in history I've ever really thought about, but I'm actually very excited for and especially because it takes place in Louisiana like I love books about the south maybe it's because I live in the south now but like I've always loved books about the south I don't know what it is but like the southern gothic feel or like the feeling like you can like literally feel the humidity in a story like mm, something about that just works for me so I'm really excited for this book I don't you guys know when I finish it but I'm sure I'll be done with it in about a day or two because her books just go quick So I finally finished Rebel and as I predicted this is another very strong four star. This one's actually a 4.5 stars out of me but I'm not gonna give it five stars because it didn't like wow me. I'm not in love with it. I don't feel the need to talk about it constantly but like I would wholeheartedly recommend this book. It is just so well done and the setting in New Orleans is just so vivid and rich during the 1860s reconstruction which I honestly learned more about from this fucking book than I ever did in fucking school. That says something. Again Beverly Jenkins is just incredibly good at weaving in the historical part parts of things, but you'd never lose the romance of the other plot of the story. Like it just works so well. And this is a perfect example of that. I will also call out the fact that a fucking white supremacist gets fed to the alligators. Need I say more? Like, do you need anything else to pick up this book? No, you don't. And by the way, even though this deals with very intense, hard to read about topics like racism, white supremacy, assault, discrimination, it is always woven into the story well and done with respect. And it's done of like the historical significance. Like it's not just like for shock value 
value or for trauma porn. It's not like that at all. Like her books are very well done. They're very well researched. And I just learned a lot. And you really feel the plight of our main character, Valinda. And so Valinda is a northerner who comes down to teach in New Orleans to help the newly freed slaves learn like basic arithmetic, reading, writing, like how to get a job and move on with their lives now that they're actually free people. And it's a really beautiful task. Like I just like the heart of gold on this woman. And the fact that our other main character, Drake, he sees that, you know what I mean? Like he really sees who she is and he fully supports her hopes and dreams, even to the point of like finding her like temporary places to have school and like make new schoolhouses because hers is like destroyed. It's just so beautiful. Like the support in this relationship, 10 out of 10. He just supports this woman no matter what. And he just lets her come to him. Like he never like forced her to do anything or beg her to be with him, even though like she has a fiance and she obviously has to choose between him and Drake and what that would mean for her life, even at the behest of her father who like wants her to just get married already. And if she's not going to get married, like she needs to move home because she wants to stay in Louisiana and she wants to teach. And Drake fully supports that. Her father does not. I could talk about this novel forever, but you guys just need to read it for yourselves. I just feel like this is one of those novels that I would just like wholeheartedly recommend. There are definitely some trigger warnings for this, but overall it's not like a triggering book. It's a very like feel good novel and it just feels like of the time. And obviously things that were in there are of historical significance and they actually mean something for the characters. And it means something for the setting and it means something for telling the story. So honestly, I just wholeheartedly recommend this. And this might be the best one out of the entire reading vlog. I mean, I haven't read the third one yet, but this one might be hard to beat. So now I'm gonna go ahead and give Destiny's Embrace a try. This one actually sounds like the least interesting to me at the moment. I just like the title, Destiny's Embrace. But to my knowledge, this is just like an out west romance and the guy falls in love with his housekeeper. So I don't really know if that's like the whole story, but like that's just kind of what I'm getting for the gist. But I don't know if a bit of Top Rebel. I don't know if you can top that book. It was really, really well done. Rebel is just that bitch. Anyway, I will get into Destiny's Embrace and let you know how I'm feeling. Okay guys, so we are at the end of the vlog and I finally finished Destiny's Embrace. And I was a little bit surprised that nobody was named Destiny in this. I think it's basically like the plot of land that they're on out in California. They refer to as like Destiny. I don't even know. But anyway, there are three books in the series and I really want to get to the third one because it takes place on a ship, which is why I think I was so inspired to pick up the like Destiny series. I just have to let you know, like I've really been into like a ship romance ever since I saw The Little Mermaid. So like if you have any suggestions, you just let me know. But this was a really good three star read. I think this is probably the lowest rated Beverly Jenkins I've ever read. And it wasn't because the book was bad at all. I really like the way she writes, but this one was just kind of like weaker in terms of lot. And the second half was just really slow up until the very end. This starts off really strong and then it carries on pretty strong until like the 50 to 60% mark. We're following our main character Mariah and she basically answers an ad to go out west to California to work as a housekeeper and she lies and says she's a widow so she can get the job and she didn't realize that she was gonna be the housekeeper to Mr. Logan Yates and he's a little bit of a stubborn ass who's kind of used to getting any woman he wants. He's attracted her from the very beginning and he actually tries to kiss her and she kicks him in his bad knee like he has a bad knee injury and she kicks him in the bad knee and is like fuck you like don't fucking touch me without my permission go her and he really likes how feisty and sassy she is and that's just kind of a departure from who she is earlier in the book because early in the book we see that she has basically been like a slave to her abusive mother her entire life and like a seamstress in her mother's dress shop and she wants to like make her own dresses and make her own designs and work on her own time and her mother's just an extremely abusive piece of shit honestly but Mariah puts up with this like her entire life and then she decides to leave and she gets her aunt's help and then goes out west so that's the whole thing and when she gets out there it's really nice to see how the community really embraces her and it's also funny to see like in a small town like how word gets around and they're always like oh is she like single is she able to get married like she looks pretty good and I'm like damn all these men out here are like hungry for wives but she's like I'm not interested but Mr. Logan Yates is also very interested and he just kind of like slowly wins her over and I really like the first beginning of the novel because their tension is really funny like it's almost like abusive in a bad way like he tries to kiss her she kicks him in the knee and then they're arguing because she's learning how to drive a buggy and he's trying to teach her and he's like not being very nice about it and she gets out in a huff and she throws a fucking rock at him and hits him right in the face like it's a little bit of a rocky relationship but that part was really funny and it's very memorable but like other than that I feel like nothing really happens in the plot to like the very very end and it just wasn't very like interesting past that point I mean they do some like fun sexy times but like I really didn't feel the relationship between them like romantically at all like I just really didn't feel it like as soon as the tension was gone and they like become a couple which is an issue I have on a lot of her books anyway I feel like as soon as that tension is gone they decide to like have sex or you know make out or whatever they're like the tension is just kind of gone there's no like angst for them 
anymore and it's just like whatever also i feel like again like nothing really happened in the last half like nothing really that interesting happened other than like her mom comes back and they have to like deal with that like there's really not that much like tension or thought past that point but maybe it's just setting up for the series like i like the out west bit of it even though this isn't her like out west series specifically i really want to get to that fucking like pirate one because that one's called destiny's captive by the way and the heroine like takes the hero captive that's so hot so anyway overall this was really good it's still only three star for me which is the lowest rating i've ever given one of her books like i just think it's like a really good like three and a half star book like it's good but like i liked it it wasn't my favorite i didn't really like it it's gonna get three stars but overall this reading vlog fucking rocked like this was so much fun i realized how much i love her as an author and now anything that she writes i'm probably just gonna like automatically want to read because honestly the lowest rating i've ever given any of her books is a three star granted i've only ever read technically four of her books but the other three were four stars and i think that's why i really wanted to do this reading vlogs because i just want some like good ass books like even though none of them were like favorites or something i want to talk about for like the rest of my life it was just a really good time i really enjoyed the books they were very entertaining and they're just like so much fun to listen to like i just really enjoyed the audiobook narrators that they get for these they're just chef's kiss and it's so much fun to listen to and it's so relaxing and it's just perfect to listen to when i'm at work and it's been very very busy lately and i think that's why a good ass audiobook is like really slapping right now so i might just like read them throughout the year i don't know i think she may be my new favorite author of the year though just because i've enjoyed so many of her books back to back who can say anyway thank you guys so much for watching have a lovely rest of your day i'll talk to you guys again soon